Part two, we are looking at cognitive psychology, and this is about the importance of knowledge. Take a minute, look at that. We'll be referring to that often in the next series of videos. First of all, defining our terms, what is knowledge? It's information that has been processed, organized, and encoded. Knowledge is important, having a body of knowledge. It's critical to achievement in any area. Having a body of knowledge improves comprehension, reading fluency, allows you to reason and problem solve more powerfully, lessens the demands, cognitive demands of problem solving, and a body of knowledge is used to interpret new situations, help you understand the importance of knowledge. Knowledge also enhances perception, meaning that you see information in a new context. You can recognize things and link it to things. And I use the analogy of when I go deer hunting. Right now, these eyes are 52 years old, but I can see a lot more things when I go deer hunting than I did when I was 15 and had those wonderful 15-year-old eyes. The eyes are worse, but there's more information related to deer, deer movement, deer hunting, etc., etc., so I perceive a great deal more. So, a body of knowledge also helps with processing, with understanding. You can link it to new things. You see the commonality. Learning is an operational definition, and this is uh, related to cognitive psychology. It's using old knowledge to construct new knowledge. And in the process of learning, this knowledge that you have in your head, this computer file full of long-term, in long-term memory full of knowledge, is used to direct the search for new knowledge. You have a body of knowledge, a context, so you know what to look for and how to understand, how to organize and store new information. As an example, when I'm reading about educational psychology, I know what to look for and I can read it and process it much easier than learning about something related to, say, finance or investment because there's nothing up here related to that. Knowledge helps. There are three types of knowledge. Declarative knowledge, sometimes called Propositional knowledge is knowing what or knowing about things. A proposition is the smallest unit of meaning, and this type of knowledge is stored in propositions in long-term memory. A proposition, also, you can say yes or no, it's either true or false. For example, in the sentence, Bill likes sour apples, there's four propositions. There's a person named Bill, yes, no, he likes something, yes, no, it must be an apple, or it is an apple, yes, no, and the apple must be sour. So stored in long-term memory like propositions, and, and that's how it is stored. And you see that nice web that we looked at earlier. Procedural knowledge is knowing how to do something, a task. And knowledge here is tied to a specific task. You know how to do something. And then practical knowledge is using declarative and procedural knowledge, using that knowledge in a way that works for you and your, your situation. You're able to make a practical application of these two. Now, and this gets kind of confusing, I know it, there are two types of both declarative and procedural knowledge. General knowledge is knowledge that can be applied to many situations. For example, I have a general knowledge about psychology, just general, about teaching and learning. Domain-specific knowledge is knowledge that is tied to a specific task, subject, or situation. An example here, I know how to teach a reading lesson that's domain specific. That has been the end of part two, looking at the importance of knowledge.